Hi, I'm Hannah Rosen, and I'm a writer for The Atlantic Magazine, and I'm here today in conversation with Anne-Marie Slaughter about her new cover story, Why Women Can't Have It All. Um, one argument you make is that a generation of feminists has sold a fiction to a younger generation of feminists. Can you talk a little bit about that? So the message has been, you can have it all, and it's been a mantra, but what the younger women I'm talking to are saying is, we appreciate that you made those sacrifices. You opened doors for us, but you know, if we have to choose between making partner and having three nannies right. or taking a more flexible legal job and spending time with our children, we're going to do the latter. But that what we're saying to them is somehow that's not a valid choice. So let's break it down a little bit. When did the realization come to you? So the first place, so I, I've always been a tenured professor, which mm -hmm. is indeed a great life and, above all, great flexibility. And mm -hmm. I was a dean. And then I get this call from Hillary Clinton uh, offering me to be director of policy planning, which is my dream job in the mm -hmm. world. It's a job I would have always been thrilled to take. But my kids are 10 and 12 when I leave. And over the next two years, I, I'm dealing with adolescence in Princeton mm -hmm. and essentially a job with a fantastic boss, but a boss. Right. And so for the first time, I had to be on somebody else's schedule, meeting somebody else's deadlines while my children really needed me. And the two things did not fit well together. And suddenly I realized that I'd been able to do everything I've done because of that flexibility. One thing that you said that's kind of depressing is about how even if you have a husband who's a totally willing equal partner in the situation, which, you know, is a solution that I have facilely put out many times in my writing life, why isn't that enough? In my case, I found that my husband was fabulous. He was there all the time. But He's a man. I had two sons. There was enough testosterone running around my household <laughs> that, you know, to power an army. In mm -hmm. other words, the dynamic with my sons really required, I felt, that I be there as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's often a necessary condition, mm -hmm. but it isn't a sufficient condition for many people. One thing that I really loved, which you put in print, which I think so few women say, which is that I want to be home. No, absolutely. And that was actually... The, one of the hardest sentences in the entire article to write, and in the first drafts of the article, it wasn't there. It took me mm -hmm. eight months to sort out that fundamentally, even if I could make it work, mm -hmm. I wanted to be home. My children are only going to be home for five more years. My son's six feet tall, and I look right. at him and think, oh, my God, you know. Does that mean my son's going to be six feet tall <laughs> one day? Possibly, quite yeah, possibly, quite yeah. possibly. <laughs> And I just thought, you know, getting up and making waffles or going mm -hmm. to a baseball game or all these silly little things, that's the reason we had children. And right. I, right. you know, it, it like broke every, everything I grew up with. <laughs> you know, I want to be home. It's right. not that I don't want to work. I do want to work. But right. I want to work in a way that allows me to be home much more than a high-level government job would let me do right now. Sheryl Sandberg, a COO of Facebook, who you mentioned in your story several times, uh, made uh, big news recently because she said she leaves the office at 5.30. <laughs> now, I reported a section of my book in Silicon Valley, and what I discovered was that it's just, they work like crazy. They just work very flexibly. Yes. Um, you have several different meditations on time, you know, how we value a mother's time versus how we value a uh, uh, you mentioned a marathon runner. <laughs> so, I mean, and, you know, imagine that you're in a, a job and you, one of the, the guys in the job runs marathons. Mm -hmm. And what you would assume about that person is that they're incredibly disciplined and mm -hmm. that they get out there and run a couple of hours before they come to work or after work. They make themselves, no mm -hmm. matter how tired they are, they get out there and work out. Mm -hmm. And then I said, now imagine the average mother you know right. <laughs> who <Right>. has... <laughs> that I know. <laughs> who <laughs> rises right. very early in the right. morning, who probably does... Even email before her kids get up, who right. then gets her kids up, makes lunch, works all day, goes home, still doing email. She's putting in the same kind of time. It's the same kind of discipline. It's the same kind of, you know, ability pace. and pace. <laughs> exactly. And yet, do most employers think of her the same way they would think of a marathon runner? And I don't think they do. You know, I'm an employer. What, what is it you want me to draw from this story? I want you to realize that unless you make it possible for the women who work for you to balance their work and family in the way they want to, with mm -hmm. flexibility, with, with all sorts of different kinds of options, you are going to lose a huge amount of talent. And that's mm -hmm. not going to be smart for you, for your business, for the society.